We want to talk as normally when we talk, obviously we talk to you at Bloomberg about as you, as um, the, the CEO of the New World Development, but, and we talk about property prices, but that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about WEMP, your foundation. Uh, w stands for well-being, EQ, mental, mental health, and, and parenting. parenting. Can you tell us a bit about how you got to set up this foundation? Was this, you set it up during the pandemic, but was it the pandemic the thing that sparked the, the decision, or is this a more longer-term interest? So for the past six, seven years, I've always focused on children charity. So children is a, it's a group and a target audience that I've been trying to help. Um, and I think during the pandemics, I think uh, you can see pressure is mounting. There's a lot of problems in under-resourced and underprivileged families. Uh, you know, divorce cases has, uh, has, a, uh, has rose, has risen a lot. Um, you know, you see f uh, fathers unemployed, mothers uh, having mental problems, and uh, and also a lot of uh, families are broken. So, um, and the most vulnerable group is actually children. Mm -hmm. So many times, um, you you talk about physical abuse, but people don't talk about mental abuse, especially in children. And during the pandemic times, you see that the past three, four years, there's. 40% increase in the number of children psychiatric um, cases in hospitals. Yeah. Um, so I started to think about, you know, children, and what's the most important thing about children is their mental health has to be um, healthy. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem that will lead to a, a different adulthood. Mm -hmm. So as a result, I started a WEMP, which focuses on uh, children mental health to promote, to support the wellness and the well-being, the mental health in children. Um, and according to WHO, 40% of Hong Kong children has uh, but mild symptoms in mental disorder, yeah. insomnia, anxiety uh, uh, attack, uh, you know, all these cases, because you have three components. One is parenting, second is schools, and third is the children's Children himself. Uh, uh, so, yeah. yeah, so that triangle is very important. And most important case, most important factor is actually parenting. Yeah. So a positive parenting and a negative parenting will directly affect the children's um, future. Okay. And so, so that's something we need to focus on a lot. Yeah. So for example, um, what we did was we, our target audience are basically you know, low-income families, uh, under-resourced uh, children, and also schools that need our help. Yeah. And we use we partner with a lot of uh, NGOs like James, I think James Settlements, yeah. Poland Cox, Sing Kong Wu yeah. to source these schools in quite more under-resourced districts, yeah. um, and focusing on on these uh, uh, target audience. How do you so so what is what you're really actually trying to do is change the way people communicate with each other and give children and parents the ability to to have conversations, right? That's a really big task. So how do you ensure um, that this progress actually happens? That you actually have the impact that you're looking for when you set up a program like this. So first, one program is like a triangle. We have the public awareness program first, mm -hmm. which we already has served. Uh, 10,000 uh, children and 20,000 parents. Uh, and we do, we cover around 30 schools per year doing a positive parenting workshop with specialists from uh, doctors and also therapists. Uh, doctors like Dr. Phyllis Chan from the Queen Mary, uh, uh, Queen's Mary Hospital, ex psychiatry department head, uh, really curating the program to raise uh, public awareness. Then we have uh, emergency cases, cases that we have, we have already helped around 80 cases for kids who have uh, immediate needs for mental uh, therapy because they probably had uh, a physical abuse uh, problem yeah. by the parents yeah. or they have all sorts of uh, reasons. Uh, and, and funny enough, in Hong Kong, it takes two years for a kid to, uh, to seek help in a, ho in a public hospital mm -hmm. uh, for mental health. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's why web is important that we can actually go into um, this gap yeah. and try to um, help cases that are in need. Mm -hmm. So at the bottom, we have the public awareness program. On the top, 
we have um, the emergency cases um, program. And now we're venturing out into kindergarten, trying to help 9,000 parents, working with also the government, hoping to get uh, government funding yeah. in going to uh, do positive parenting in uh, kindergartens as well. Yeah. Yes. So and I social impact is also impact. So we have uh, impact measurements from third party um, uh, institutions, for example, Ernst and Young doing our social impact measurement. But most important thing is to really go down into the program and find gaps that, um, that because ma many times when we are looking at crafting a program, we, we think we're doing that and we have this feel good effect and we want to help all the children, but once we're going to the program itself, we felt we felt that there's a lot of problems and gaps that are not uh, well designed. Right. So, for example, uh, we for our uh, awareness program, which we were, uh, which we implemented in all the uh, under under resourced districts, yes. uh, such as uh, some sort of poem, I did a visit uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm on one Saturday, and I, it was a public awareness program, 60 parents, 60 parents uh, enrolled, and uh, we have sessions, we have therapists, and we have self-help group, the parents were very happy, we have volunteers helping, helping them to, um, to understand the problems, they're, they're talking about their problems, they're sharing their, their um, sorrows about uh, uh, family problems and so forth. But then I asked a question, I said, what school is this? This school is a, sub, it's a subsidized school. 30% of the schools are really, really under-resourced and underprivileged families who uh, live in subdivided housings or you know, really bad right. conditions, yeah. Yeah. housings, conditional housings. And I asked them, I said, are these 60 parents part of how many are those, those 30%? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then actually the headmaster said none. Oh. Even though it's a, it is a subsidized school, mm -hmm. these uh, parents are all grassroots parents, which we want to help as well. The most targeted audience that we want, the, we want to help the most is those 30%. Right. But we couldn't get those 30% into the session. Uh -huh. And the reason why is that usually those, those target groups, they want to hide in the dark. Mm. and not going into these sessions mm -hmm. I, for all sorts of reasons, you know, no competence, um, because of money problems, um, and so forth. So that is a, if, 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 I don't, if, if I'm on the top, looking at the numbers, I see 60 parents yeah, yeah. in, subsidized, in sub, yeah. subsidized schools yeah, yeah. in Shamshui Bowl and yeah. a very under-resourced district, yeah. and then it would be a, a tick on my checklist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I go into the program, I realize that we're not targeting the right crowd. Even though we are we're trying to help the grassroots, but I really want to help the 30%, yeah. right? Which is the, the most in need. Yeah. Yeah. And so I have to talk with the headmaster and create a new solution. Mm -hmm. And what happens now is we're going to still do the, the programs, but we may subsidize the transportation fee. And right. also, we, may, yeah. we need to provide dinner for them as well. Of course, yeah. Because many times, these families are very, are very uh, money sensitive mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't have a lot to, 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 uh, to They have no free. Exactly, to spend. Like and they probably apply for a social benefit uh, grant or teacher assistant grant. Okay. So they don't have a lot of disposable income. Mm -hmm. um, so as a result, once we solve that, we can attract the right targets that right. We want right. to help. And you're building a structure, right, where you know, okay, the next time you roll this out in another district, this is how we need exactly. to think about this. Right. So many times when we are donating money, we're doing charity, um, it's a feel-good effect, it's great. But who, I mean, many times you don't look at the program and say, are we really capturing the right audience? Yeah. Is this program well-designed to capture the audience right? So. We have to, a lot, there's a lot of tweaks that we need to do with the programs by really seeing yourself and feeling it yeah. and then interviewing the, the, the parents to do social impact measurement. Even using Ernst & Young, a third party uh, company, doesn't, I mean, it's yeah. good, but it's on paper. Yeah. But once you go into the program, you realize that 
there's uh, so many tweaks that you need to do. And yes. uh, so it's like I, never, it's never done. It's like never you, done. You so you keep on refining the program, refining the protocol, and then trying to scale it once it's right. Right. Um, and then another thing I think for the longevity, I think another thing about the sustainability and the longevity of a program is that um, I don't know if any people know that a lot of times charities doesn't donate to a program for many, many years. So you don't have a sustainability of that program. Yeah. Yeah. So what we do is we try to support that program as long as possible oh, right. so that you can see the ultimate and the most uh, powerful effect right. for, of, of the program. Well, because it is a very broad, very, um, very comprehensive goal, right? So this will be a multi-year generational thing that you're trying to change here. Do you think that this is exportable, this kind of a model? Just in general, would you see this ultimately being having web foundations across Asia or collaborating with other places or collaborating with the government? Yes, we uh, we would love to, you know, collaborate with the government and also other families or other charitable foundations around Asia. So WEMP is not just for Hong Kong; mm -hmm. it's for Greater China and also mm -hmm. Asia. Mm -hmm. um, so I think collaborations one plus one equals, I mean, three yeah. equals four. Yeah. I yeah. think it's important, and also to create an alliance in uh, in Asia. It's something that um, I'm looking forward to as well. Yeah, because I think mental health, I mean, if, as you mentioned, one thing the pandemic taught us is, right, that we, we are not just physically present, right? Men, building mental resilience is really important. Yes. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, as we, I, I think if, if okay with you now, I'd like to talk a little bit more broadly. We've already sort of ventured into this a little bit more broadly. If somebody is thinking about setting up a foundation, you've set up several foundations, what would be your sort of, advice to that person around how to think about it? Um, my advice is this. If you want to do a philanthropy or charitable foundation, um, don't do it because it's trendy. Mm -hmm. Don't do it because it's a feel-good effect. Mm -hmm. um, don't do it because your family has all of money and we need to do philanthropy. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no, you have to do a philanthropy kind of concept. But you really need to look close to your heart. Some causes and some problems in society which you really want to address. Mm -hmm. It has to be authentic. Mm -hmm. You have to really feel that passion to it. Okay. Thirdly, is that once you have that, you need to structure and and, and create a charitable foundation that has good corporate governance um, and really target the right audience as I said yeah. just now, and really designed a program that really can capture that audience and help them. Mm -hmm. And that really needs top down and bottom up mm -hmm. kind of connection mm -hmm. and collaboration as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's very important. I mean, a lot of families in Asia has a lot of money and they, do, they donate to this organization, they donate to this, and they, they do impact measurement, but they have never seen the program. They've never actually go to the program and see what they're doing and understanding what is the cause, how they're doing it, how much administrative cost they're using. You know, they have not really looked into that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but do it because they need to do a philanthropy foundation yeah, yeah. and help the world, yeah, yeah. right? So, so I think these are, for me, I think it's personally, I think we should not be incentivized by these uh, factors, but really first identify your authentic mm -hmm. passion of authentic um, cause that is close to your heart. Yeah. Um, so for me, children is something that is very, very close to my heart. And then mental health, because of the pandemic, yeah. children mental health becomes something that um, that is close to my heart enough for me to, to, to create a foundation to, to promote and support wellness and mental health in children and in families. Yeah. Um, and also working with all, all, all different NGOs. We work with a lot of NGOs in Hong yeah. Kong, but a lot of it's district NGOs, local, mm -hmm. local yeah. NGOs right. who knows the community uh, yeah. Yeah. well yeah. enough yeah. Yeah. Um, to give us a lot of feedbacks. So basically, do you think that there's a shift in the way 
people, uh, sort of the generational of philanthropists is shifting because in the prior uh, panel, they mentioned that, you know, a lot of uh, philanthropic efforts in Asia are sort of people are very private about it. But this, when I listen to you, you have to really own it and, and be there and be visible about it. Um, I, I think we have to be visible about it. Yeah. Um, we have to, because we need to raise awareness yeah. about it too. It's not about, it's not about me, it's about the cause. It's yeah. about really um, letting people understand the problems mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in your cause, right? right. So um, many times I think old traditional philanthropy in families are talking about, you know, they talk about education, they donate to all the different causes, mm -hmm. but I think it's important to really raise awareness yeah. and then also do a lot of collaboration and build alliances with other families or other charitable foundations yeah. to increase that awareness yeah. across uh, all Asian uh, countries. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think that's very important. Yeah. I think that's a new uh, also paradigm shift for philanthropy as well. Yes. Yeah, I do think that particularly when it comes to mental health, right? And yes, yes. That, that is something health. that a lot of people don't. And, and many times about. mental health, especially in children, is neglected. Yeah. Because children do, do not tell you what they're really feeling, no, they right? Feel so we do have a program called the Compassionate Program where we use emotional cards to let small kids uh -huh. to express and define their emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Are you depressed? Are you guilty? What, what, what are you feeling right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as many times, it's a good way to let them to express the emotions, define the emotion, and put it on the table. Yeah. Yeah. And let them see that this is, is this stress or why are you stressed? Yeah. You know, so for kids, it's good because they can tell their parents and using emotional cards to tell their parents what they're really feeling. Right. It, it, and hopefully start a conversation. Exactly. Right? And then sort of build, take that a step further. Um, I, I want to address one issue that you, we talked about really briefly was the, um, your collaboration between RAMP and the Cambridge University. Yes. That, yes. Because if, I think that's a big piece of modern foundations, right? Yes. Is that data-driven element. Exactly. So underneath the triangle yeah. is also uh, found research programs too. Yeah. So we have research programs uh, working with specialists and professors from the Cambridge University to actually go into and, and create a task force coming to Hong Kong to really examine um, the socio-cognitive skills, um, children's mental health development, and kids' readiness of Hong Kong children. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the research and the report will be issued, I think, uh, third or fourth quarter of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's very important for us to understand from a research point of view, from a research perspective, um, what are the gaps and how do we um, you know, improve our programs right. a little right. bit. So that's also for sustainability of the philanthropy and uh, foundation and also for uh, the longevity of the foundation right. as well. And that, I think as a base, that is the fundamental mark as well. Right. And we only started for a year and a half, so we have a lot of um, things that, and factors that we need to improve. So we're still learning yeah. and we're still growing as well. That's great. Well, thank you so much thank for you. sharing your insights, Adrian. Thank you. It's lovely to see you today. Um, yes, and good luck. We'll have you back to tell us more about how things are going.